All right, everybody, welcome in. Let's play some chess. So we're starting off with the white pieces, and we're going to go into our the same opening we've tried many times with this leading off of the knight. I like it because every game is different, every game is unique, and every game is interesting. Um, I don't like it because I've been losing games lately, and I'm, I'm frustrated with myself for missing obvious things. Okay, so this is an opportunity. Uh, we could basically do anything we want. Um... I'm going to try this. Uh, I've been trying this a little more frequently lately to see if... Uh, okay, I'm first surprise of the day. Because now if he pushes, I can grab. Anyway, um, so I just want to try to get better at spotting the whole board. So I'm going to be focusing this game on looking at all four corners of the board constantly. And I want you guys to challenge me on that and just make sure that, you know, as you're watching me play, make sure that I am looking at the whole board and I'm not missing things because I don't want to get into a situation where I, I miss things. My opponent's playing real pawn heavy here, which is interesting to me. I'm going to start here, even though I, I'm, I'm really tempted to play uh, d4 or e3. These are my next pawn moves. I'm, I'm going to hold off on the c4, I think. Um, I, I don't... I have noticed that I've been forcing c4 a lot, trying to force that line, and because of it, it's putting me in awkward positions. I'm tempted to even go here, but now let's just go... Notice that this check is a possibility. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to hold off slightly. Yeah. But now I have access to this, this and this, um, which I like a lot. I'm holding off on castling because there's no telling what my opponent is about to do. And as we said, there's no telling what our opponent's about to do. Do I have any way of challenging that queen? Not really. That's attacked twice and only defended once. That doesn't work. Um, I'm unable to rotate my knight the way I want to. I'm seriously debating on just castling now. Because that would give me the option to pop my knight up. But this does give me a little bit of concern. You know, and so it is something that I want to keep in mind that this outside rook is a distinct, you know, possibility. However, the center of the board is starting to open up. And I want to I want to be there for it. All right, let's see. Where do we want this knight to go? This immediately attacks here, but it doesn't. It's not really doing anything. It's just kind of locking down the queen. Doesn't give me any additional protection on this side of the board. Whereas here, my opponent simply pushes their outside pawn, and then I'd have to rotate the knight again. And where would I move the knight? I have to be very careful because notice my squares are blocked so I have to come up here and then push and then here that's a lot of rotating Uh, 
Although that's interesting. All right, so let's take a look at this. This does, like I said, if my opponent pushes, that's the only thing defending this square. And that would give me an outpost defended by my other knight. Which would be fun. Uh, if the opponent does move the queen, I do get access here. But now I'm wondering if we blow things up with this. Because if my opponent takes on passant, we've got it covered. With the possibility of getting our queen out this way. Hmm. Not certain here, friends. Not certain here at all. But here I am, going back, scanning my four corners, going back, scanning my four corners. Okay, so now this is a possibility. I have to be really careful because I, I, I don't want to accidentally throw the game. That would be a better possibility. I would really enjoy that a lot. Excellent, excellent, covered by my opponent. But now... Grab a pawn with check, he takes back, I can take for free. Let's do it. Let's go for it. The only reason I'm doing this is because this knight is, is blocking the way and this rook is completely undefended. And so I can get it and then get back. That's the goal. The goal is to get the bishop back. Well... Plans change, my friends. Plans change. I'm scanning the board again, scanning the board, scanning the board. But I want to get back. But the good news is by eliminating that bishop, our light square bishop um, gets amped up a lot. Um, this threat, ah, clever girl, clever girl, clever girl. Didn't see that coming. That's a good move. Did not see that coming. Once again, the queen... Well, no, the queen is no longer tied down because the other knight is in the game. Um, I think we just keep trading. And I don't mind exposing my king too much right now because I should be safe even if this trade happens. Number one, because I get another piece. Now I gotta watch out for any possibility of deflections. So let us just bring our bishop back. Is there a better square for it? Maybe here with check? Okay, we got a couple options. Number one, check. Check. These are my two candidate moves. I 
I think I'm gonna go with this one first. Just save the bishop. Check. Pick up another pawn. We're threatening, well, we're not threatening that yet but we could stick our queen underneath it and pin the... Yeah, that's all we're gonna do is stick our, our queen here, pin that knight. Now I'm going to actually start sliding my king out of the way because, yeah, there are some things that are happening here that I do not want to be a part of. Namely, my opponent is about to start attacking. So, let us let us get this guy out of the way somewhere. I've really got him start moving quicker. Um, I am I am running short on time. Uh, I don't want to do that because that gives up that square. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Um, takes, takes, takes. Uh, that's probably a good trade, actually. I'm giving back material voluntarily because I'm up material, but it's with purpose. Make sure my um, my queen doesn't get trapped. And now we're looking at pushing our outside pawns. Hmm. Push, he takes. Yeah, I gotta play faster. So this is a threat, but so is this. Check, I take, no check, no rotation. Oh, and it's, it's hanging, the rook's hanging, so I'm good. There is no threat here. Oh, duh, he's got it covered. I looked right past it. Take take and I'm screwed damn it um, all right so let's take no I get the rook back at least so I'm still up material even though I had to give up my queen I've got two rooks for the queen it's not ideal. Um, Time-wise is more of an issue now than, than material.
Got to watch out for back rank issues now. I'm assuming this. Eh, it's not really a back rank issue when I've got all the field covered. But I do have to move fast. So the only threats right now are my opponent's bishop and queen. And I've, I've got a, a random pawn to keep an eye of. I can start pushing my outside past pawns. I've got connected past pawns here. Like I said, there is this weird back rank issue, but I can easily solve that. I'm not too worried about it. Gives me a free rook lift. Nope. Mouse slip. Gives me a free rook lift. Let's me clean up. Wish I had gone this direction with my, yeah. I think we just start here, pushing the past pawn. I've got to get my rooks reconnected, yeah. As long as I don't lose on time now, I should be good. I've got myself into a winning position. Surprising that my king is safe. Uh, if I get on the back row, though, that's checkmate. Oh, duh, I was supposed to go here first, but that's all right. But realistically, at this point in time, honestly, I should just trade everything down because I still have these three past pawns. Everything is defended. There's no threat to me. It's my opponent who's under attack. All right, my, my, my bishop is loose. So that is a possibility I need to keep an eye on. I mean, I could just trade here and go after the same exact plan. But if we can do it and get our rooks connected at the same time, that might be a good thing. Scanning the board again, going back. I haven't done enough of that. Scanning the board. And you notice I'm using right click to scan the board because I don't want to accidentally pre-move anything. So I can just take. And then honestly, I can just go here. Let's connect our rooks. Let's get the rooks connected. I think that's important. This is defended. And then we just start pushing our other pass pawns. And I don't think my opponent can keep an eye on all of them. I mean, right now the threat is just for me to push and, and eliminate the queen. Which is what we're going to go for. There's no back rank issues that I got to worry about. That's just a free queen. There's no stalemate.
and I'm going to allow my opponent to escape. His only legal move. And then what? With check. Uh, yep. And then now we can just ladder mate. I've got to make sure I don't screw this up because if I go here, I need him to be able to escape. So he can't escape, therefore, ah, but I've got this. GG, well played. Almost didn't check the whole board again. I forgot my bishop was sitting there. All right, let's go back and take a look. This was an odd game from the very beginning, wasn't it? Um, the Sicilian variation of the Zuktort, excuse me, the Zukratort, which is an invitation into the ready opening, R-E-T-I, the ready opening, which we didn't go into. And then, yeah, C4 here is the main line uh, because your opponent's already played. And then if the main line of the ready looks like this, and I've been trying to force this variation, and I've just not been having success with it. It's just not, it doesn't lead to positions that are interesting to me. Um, and I get into these cramped positions that I don't know how to escape from. And they end up becoming um, fighting over small incremental advantages, and I don't know how to spot those yet. So, um, my opponent went for this, but because of that, I can still go for the C4, which is kind of the ready. Um, notice that now, this isn't so bad. Oh no, it is bad. Forgive me. Yeah, C captures is the main line. Oh, and then not capturing back, right. Not capturing back is, is, is the variation. Okay. Anyway, so let's go back to the very beginning and let's just see how this game played out. Because it was an odd... Oh, let's see. Yeah, from, from right here, this early H5 move, literally no games in the uh, Masters database. There's 70 games in the Lee Chess database. We're down to eight games. And no games. So as of move three, we're in a brand new game. Oh, and this is looking for my game specifically. This is a new feature that Lee Chess just added, by the way. This is brand new to Lee Chess, uh, where you can tab through and you can see your specific games. And this would be the game that we just played. <laughs> that fast, it's already in the database. Look at that, interesting. All right, so let's turn that off. We'll leave the engine on. And yeah, you can see here that this uh, this allows white to get a slight advantage. Wow, and black gets their advantage right back. Okay, because they take the whole center, interesting. This is fascinating. That is fascinating. Did not see that at all. But yeah, black has played some funny moves. Now white starts to build that advantage uh, because of just developing more. I mean, look at the development here. We can see that one, two, three, four pieces developed versus two. Oh, plus castled, so five pieces developed versus two. And then more weaknesses in front of the king. Yeah, see, the engine here is saying C3 instead of C4. And I don't, I never know the difference of when I should play C3 or when I should play C4. It's one of the things I don't understand yet. I'm trying to do all of this as self-taught as possible. And I'm starting to get to the point where I need I need a little help. I need I need someone to start pointing out some things that I'm obviously missing. Yeah, 
and opponent didn't take and then yeah here's the the, the b pawn push to break up the center um which gives me access to this Yeah, and black on uh, just just playing some some. Now this is not an odd move. It's it's basically ensuring that my knight doesn't get here. But yeah, and then look at this this sacrifice right here. Boom. It is a a good sacrifice. And then wow. And then yeah, changing game plans because our opponent did not take back. Just changing game plans, and retreating the way we did. Hugely successful. Yeah, hugely successful. And the advantage here is just overwhelming. And yeah, I should have just traded back. Obviously, I should have just traded back. Give, give the piece back. I mean, um, um, not even give the piece back, but trade the piece, because we're up so much material that trading down obviously makes sense. That's one of the uh, you know, obvious game plans, but I wanted to hold on to this bishop as long as possible, and maybe I didn't need to. Yeah, just trading, trading. Ah, this is a good one. I went for the queen trade and my opponent said no. And then yeah, we could have grabbed the pawn immediately or brought the bishop in. And the bishop check here is actually not a good move according to the engine, at least not in the top three moves. Yeah, it it, it is not a um, top move at all. But then yeah, my opponent responded by stepping back, allowing me the pawn. And I thought I thought my opponent at this point in time started to put together a a solid um, response. Enough material had been traded off that all of a sudden lines have now opened up, and they're able to get their heavy hitters back into the game. The queens are still on the board, and anytime the queens are still on the board, there's a chance. At a minimum, there's a chance for perpetual checks, right? Force your opponent into threefold repetition or perpetual checks, and get a draw out of the deal. And when you're this far behind to squeeze a draw, that's a huge victory. Um, hmm. Interesting. I didn't see this because that would almost force the en passant, which I could take back. And I'm still kind of defensive enough, and I can park my king here if I need to. Yeah, okay. Did not consider that at all. I just moved my queen... Yeah, I was worried about this coming um, and putting me in position, and I, I, I completely blanked. I mean, you guys saw I bl completely blundered right here. Oops. Yeah, fart. I got to go back to the game far enough. All right, let's follow along. Um, yeah, this sacrifice is not, according to the engine, not ideal. See, I was worried about doing something like this because my opponent doesn't have to take. And then if I take, he just replaces that pawn. So I'd really have to get all the way up here. But doing this allows me to get my queen untrapped and then I voluntarily trapped it again anyway. Yeah, right here, I, uh, I forgot that this pawn was sitting here that this was a defended square. I mean, you guys even saw me at the time. I said, well, if he just checks, I just move out of the way. But he can't even do it because his rook is hanging. But no, that's that comes with check, and you saw how important that was. But luckily, we were up so much material, and we did this in a way that we were able to get um, two pieces for the queen. I mean, we were basically trading eight points of material for nine, so it's not the end of the world. But we're able to do it, and um, because we were up so much material already, that, I mean, this game is still pretty much over. Yeah, so right here we're up a rook and four pawns to a knight. So an exchange plus four pawns. So even this wasn't the end of the world. It's still a blunder. It's still a huge blunder on my part. Still something that I completely overlooked. Still something I need to get better at. Um... Yeah, I kind of wish I'd gone this direction instead. Um, I just figured my opponent would immediately block, but then I've got access to here, so I don't. I don't know. I wanted to keep an eye on this passed pawn. 
And then you know, these these one move attacks, right? Anytime you make these one move attacks, which I am completely guilty of as well, guys, right? I'm completely guilty of it. A one move attack, you have to ask yourself what is the what is the opponent's you know primary response to that? Well, this one move attack, I'm going to move my rook. Well, I kind of want to move my rook anyway. You know, another one move attack. Well, I kind of want to move my rook anyway. So, I mean, this just ended up in my favor. I was going to move that rook no matter what. So my opponent just lost two tempo just doing that. We all do it. Like, it's one of those learning things that we all have to learn. One move attacks don't work. You have to really... Um, have to think just one more step, two more steps. And see, now if my bishop had been sitting here like I wanted earlier, then this would have been a huge geometry problem for my opponent. Basically, my opponent would be forced to give back the queen. Yeah. Yeah, one move attack, but the idea was to free up my rooks so that I could get my rooks down to the back row. And this is funny to me. This is this is funny to me that I should have just ignored it completely, and I should have just gone straight straight up. Because now the opponent doesn't have access to that. This is coming. Yeah, the best move by the opponent is here. Wow, it's funny you just shut it down. You say, "Who cares?" It's shut it down. I mean, it's checkmate and whatever. So even if we look at the best moves, yeah, here. Even if the opponent hadn't moved the king, let's say they move something else. Let's say they do this, right, to attack. It's still, oh, because the bishop, because the bishop is guarding it. And the bishop is guarding this, so this and this are all blocked off. This is blocked off by the pawn. Ha! The pawn, the bishop... And the rook all conspire together to checkmate the king. That is interesting. I got to get better at seeing those guys. All right. Well, in, over the board, my pawn. I went for the lazy man's way. Um, yeah, I should have just gone for this trade. My opponent takes. Um, I happily take. I've traded a pawn for a bishop. So all my opponent has left is a queen. And yeah. I don't know why I didn't just take here. I mean, that's obviously winning as well. Checkmate in five, and it took me forever. Checkmate in two here. See, this is the thing that I got to... Oh, okay, right, duh. Because this, this, this is covered. This, this is covered. This is the only escape square. What if I had done this? Yeah, it doesn't matter what my opponent does because oh, I got that. I don't know about that. Duh. Duh. I don't know why I didn't do that. Give our, give your opponent options, even if they're taking, because uh, you don't want to stalemate. But then, yeah, I fooled around for a whole bunch. Basically let my opponent king walk for no reason. And then right here, if I had gone, um, yeah, stalemate, and that would have been a draw for my opponent. Up 28 points of material and end up in a draw, yeah, that would have been ugly. This is checkmate as well. Yeah, I got to get better at these checkmate patterns. All right, guys, this was a fun one. Um, I really appreciate you guys sticking around, uh, watching the game with me. You know, uh, like I said, I'm getting... This was an interesting game. This was not my best work. This is not my best game, but it's definitely not my opponent's best game by far. Um, but we made some good choices. I feel pretty good about some of the choices we made. We, we saw a couple of good tactics. 
Um, this one here, not so great. Just trade, just trade, just trade. And my opponent basically encouraged me to trade right here. This never became an issue. My opponent just couldn't get coordinated enough for it. But this is, um, this game was pretty much over by this point. It was just a matter of, of converting the end game. And like I said, I took it the slow way and I need to get better at finding those, those slam dunks, you know, those home run hitters. Um, like, look, we go from a forced checkmate to only plus 10, which is still a winning game, but when you have the queens on the board, it is entirely possible to end up allowing your opponent to force a draw. Or, God forbid, end up in an um, accidental checkmate on the wrong side of the board, right? So, uh, I gotta find these, these knockout punches, and I forgot to see this geometry. And I gotta get better at it. Plain and simple. So, all right, guys, thanks for sticking around. We're still hovering right around 1550 to 1600. Um, I was really hoping to, to, you know, this week to get that push to the 1700 and um, really make some progress. But um, I am, I'm right in that. I play just good enough to get against some strong opponents, and those strong opponents are better than me. Plain and simple. It's just how it goes. But thanks for sticking around. I'll catch you guys next time. Bye.